Es un verdaderísimo placer poder platicar con Joseph Stone. First of all, thank you so much oh, for the time of this interview. Yes, yes. How could you describe the, the experience uh, of your show here in Mexico? It was great, actually. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was brilliant. The audience were really friendly and they were very open and happy to hear the new songs. Yeah. So sometimes when I say, oh, I'll make a new song, you hear everyone go quiet. But not here in Mexico. But not here. <laughs> like, Woo! Yeah. And it's because it's a really, it's a really good album. Tell us a little bit the, the experience of uh, the adventure of the creating process for uh, Water for Your Soul. You know, it's been, it's been a while. We kind of started making it, oh, I don't know, over five years ago now, yeah. really. Um, and it wasn't a focused effort. It wasn't, it wasn't like, right, let's sit down and make a radio record. Exactly. It wasn't like that. Yeah. It was... I like this song, let's make another song like that, and then we left it for a year. And then I met Damien, yeah. and then he said, no, no, continue, do it, do it. So then we started again, and then we left it. You know, so it's kind of, it's been inspired by lots of travel and lots of different people that I've met over the years, really. But you decided to put more reggae in the album before meeting uh, Damien Marley. Yeah, yeah. So how was the experience when you met him? Well, I mean, I love reggae. Yeah. I think everybody loves reggae, really. It's kind of that stuff. It <laughs> yeah. makes everyone happy. So, um, yeah, I dipped into it. And I made this kind of, what well, we did Underworld and Clean Water and Wake Up. They were like, I guess, rootsy, reggae-type vibes, which are on the album. And um, so I met with Damien to do another project called Super Heavy, and yeah. we started writing together. But then after those sessions, we would go into his studio down the hallway and just jam on some things and he said, you know, your voice sounds really good on reggae, like you should just, you should do that. Yeah. And I said, well, I kind of have. <laughs> yeah, I have and I, something. Yeah, I said, can I play it to you? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, just play it to me. And I said, oh God, it made me really nervous, you know, because Damien's not the type of person to make anyone nervous, he's very warm and, but to play that yeah, style to him, that's scary. Yeah. It was scary, <laughs> but he liked it. Of course, so yeah. I felt like, oh, thank God. If Damien likes it, then it's okay. Yeah, I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, awesome. exactly. Now, talking about the, the single, uh, Stuck on You, tell us a little bit the story behind that song. Stuck on You. Ooh. That was, um, I wrote that song when I was majorly pissed off with my boyfriend. Like, oh. So, you know, there are stories of my life that come from a long time ago from a different yeah. person yeah. that they that experience has found its way into this song yeah. um, but really it was inspired by my current boyfriend at the moment <laughs> who I was absolutely livid with what so, did he say when, when you told him I wrote you a song he was like you know <laughs> I always say that like, like the next morning I'm like baby this one's about you <laughs> check it out yeah he's like really <laughs> but he normally he'll I'll try to communicate with him through song, yeah, awesome. through my lyrics, yeah. and I make them very specific so he doesn't get confused, <laughs> and um, I'll play it, and he'll be like, ah, oh, I love the beat, I love the bass line. I'm like, but, yeah, check the lyrics. But what is the song about, <laughs> you know? So it takes a really long time for him to actually click. But, um, you know, it's obviously exaggerated. It, the, the way the song turned out is much more, um, I guess it's deeper than, than what the situation actually was for me. So, you know, it's a, it's a mix of a couple of relationships. Cool. Now, acting, because I know you're, you're uh, the Tomorrow, the Tomorrow movie. Yeah. Tell us the experience. I didn't that. do Do you know what? This is so funny. You didn't do it? Well, I did it, but I didn't really do anything in it. I kind of just walked in and walked out. It's, you know, Cameo? Okay, but it's have a name. You like, you're, you're not like Mandy, your, your character is named. She has a name. Yeah, it's. I mean, okay, so I literally walked in, I said, oh, your dog's cute, and then I left. And what about Aragon? Aragon, okay, so that was okay, a little bit more involved, <laughs> but only very marginally. So yeah, that, that was more of a, I kind of spent a week in Budapest. This is years ago. Um, yeah. And I really enjoyed that because it was a character role. It, was, it wasn't just me, it yeah. was a witch. <laughs> and I love that. Um, um, and then the Tudors, again, that was a character role, and that was... Uh, Oh, I don't know, maybe six weeks here and then another six weeks there. So it was more of a project. And I had like a real experience with acting with, with the Tudors. 
and I had to do an accent that wasn't my own. I had to speak in a different language. That's a good challenge. Oh, I loved it. I totally loved it. <laughs> and do you have plans to do more acting in the future? I don't have any plans, but, but you, you I would do. like to do it. Yeah, I would like to. Yeah, I maybe, so. maybe once I've done the world tour and that's over, which would take a few years. Yeah, because that's know. the next yeah. question about it. A real world tour. You want to visit? I read like two hundred and four countries. Yes. Right. Yeah. How How are you doing so far? Well. Taking a very long time. Yeah, I guess so. It's <laughs> like, I, I, in, if my math, if my math is not fail, it's yeah. gonna take for probably three years for doing that. Yeah, yeah, it would take about three years, I think. So, and that's if we do it in an organized fashion and yeah. everything gets planned. And but everything is not getting planned out like that. It's hard. It's, it's hard, hard to do it. So to get an agent to book a gig. Yeah, in every in, country. I mean, even in Suriname is hard. Yeah. You know, or. To get them to book a gig in yeah, Yemen or whatever. Exactly, you know, North Korea. Yeah, it's an issue. North Korea so is gonna be hard. They're just not up for it. They're like, no. Nope, yeah. I'm not doing it. <laughs> so that's difficult because I'm like, well, my belief is, where there is people, there is music, yeah, of and where there is music, there is love and there is joy. I just believe that. So, I'm gonna just continue my path. Hopefully, you're gonna be successful with that. So. Now, I, I'm going to ask you because you have shared a uh, stage with so much great artists, like legend, great legendary art, art, uh, artists, so I'm going to ask you about three of them and tell me your experience of working with them. Okay. Start with James Brown. James Brown. Yeah. Do you know what? I was so lucky to get to sing with that guy. Yeah, it was really, a, like um, it was a funny situation because the television show where we sang together, um, it's a chat show with a guy called Jonathan Ross. Yeah. And before, I was probably 17, 18, I don't know, I was young. And of course I listened to James Brown. He was someone I listened to since I was two. Yeah. Um, they said, well, will you sing with James? Can you learn the song Man's World? I said, yeah, I'll learn it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I get the song, I download the lyrics, and I'm, I mean, we all know Man's World. I'm just kind of deciphering, what is this, what is that? And then they go, actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we cancel, don't worry about it, you're not doing it. And I was like, oh, okay, God, you get nervous. Yeah, of course. And then um, I was sat on the sofa watching the screen as Jonathan was interviewing James. And I'd met him before and he'd been cool, but I didn't really know him like that well. Yeah. And um, Jonathan goes, you know Joss Stone's back there? And James said, yeah, yeah, Joss, Joss is great, yeah. And he goes, well, why don't you sing with her later? So I'm like, oh. My God. <laughs> oh my God. No one told me that I was doing it. I didn't learn the word. And I was like, shit. So I, I quickly, somebody printed the lyrics for me. and I mean, I had 20 minutes. So then I just, I went on there. I did what I could do. He said he'll start with Man's World. Yeah. But then he changed it to another song. And then he changed it to another song. So luckily, I mean, I've been put up on James Brown, so I knew it, but it was very scary. And I feel like, you know, my horn players played with him, so I yeah. met them there. And they said he used to do that to people. All the time. He used to do that to people all the time. <laughs> just to test them out, just to see. I'm going to test you. Can you handle it? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And you can handle it. I can do this. Yeah. Awesome. Now, cool. the cool. other one from Mexico, Carlos Santana. Oh, wow. You know, I never got to meet him. You, oh, really? No, it was you know what? There are so distance? many collaborations oh. that go on in this world where people don't meet. Yeah. And unfortunately, that was one of them. Wow. I mean, I would love to. And the other one, hopefully, you you uh, knew her, uh, Annie Lennox. Annie, yeah. yeah. How Do you know, I'd love to have a real collaboration with Annie. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she wrote that song, Sing, and there was a lot of different girls on it, and it was yeah. the same situation. You know, I've met her, but and how I'd like to write with her or yeah. sing with her on stage or do something like that. Because she's another one that I listened to, you know, I was brought up on that voice. Yeah. Um, it was the Eurythmics. It wasn't just Annie Lennox. It was, yeah, so it was the yeah. Eurythmics that I, what was it called? Diva or something, the album. <sighs> Bloody great, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I just loved it. I loved it. Walking on broken glass and things like that. And then Dave Stewart is obviously the Eurythmics too. Yeah. And I've worked with him loads. So <laughs> I feel really lucky. You know? awesome. Now, now that we're talking about about girls, now girls are ruling the music. Uh, it, what's your opinion about? Are we? Yeah, yeah, of course. That's nice. Do you know what? I did notice that a little bit in soul music because, you know, there's like, 
James Brown, as I just read in, Al Green, you know, Marvin Gaye, loads of male voices yeah. um, that we listen to and love. But then there was this whole explosion of all these female soul yeah. voices. Yeah, with the which Franklin. Is, yeah, which is great, but I do think that it goes in waves. So, I don't know, do you guys know Michael Kiwanuka? No. Oh my God, he's so good. I'm going to check it out. He's so, so good. <laughs> Michael Kiwanuka. Ki uh, the, the, the last name is kind of hard. It's, hard but... to, it's like K-I-W-I-N-U-K-A. Kiwanuka. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to His try. voice and his, the album that he's made is gorgeous. You know, so I thought, oh, it's starting. When I heard him, Okay, now we're now we're gonna go. The boys are gonna come, so we'll see. I mean, yeah. it goes in ways. It and goes and in it ways. goes in ways, and it goes in a bad thing and in in, in, a, in a good thing. But because for me, yeah. sometimes right now it looks like the industry are looking for a girl with a nice ass instead yeah. of a girl with a nice voice. Very true. Very it, true. It, it's not uh, it's not fair in my opinion. Well, do you know what I've there was there was a time when that really pissed me off, and I was like. This is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for God's sake, yeah. if you're going to sing, yeah. you should be able to do that. Of course. You know, if you're going to do any job, yeah. if you're a hairdresser, I would hope that you could cut hair. <laughs> totally. You agree. know, it's, very, it's a very simple black and white opinion totally, yeah. I, that I have on that. But at the same time, there's, there's, a, uh, there's a place for everybody. There's a space for everything. And the reality is, it seems that the masses like to eat McDonald's. Yeah, it's true. They like to eat it. It's true. They like to eat it. It's you true. know, it is what yeah. it is. And the masses also like to, I don't know, listen to a certain style of music that maybe doesn't include instruments. That's it's true. more computer. It's more like... Yeah, so I've come, I've come to a piece with it now. I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. I just do something else and yeah. different type of people will listen to that. And a lot of people also listen to that. Yeah, it's a, a lot of people it. do. Maybe yeah. less, but it doesn't less, matter. Less, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. And maybe yeah, it's true. better. Yeah. Because the life that comes with a huge success is not a very fun life. So it's better to have it just be a success. Oh, no, it's true. It's true. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning from just It's them. nicer to live this way. Yeah. <laughs> now, talking again about your music, what could be the, the biggest lesson that the two soul sessions give it to you? Okay. That's a good question. So the first soul session, that was my biggest lesson in music. In music, yeah. Because I didn't know what the hell I was doing at all. So the lady that taught me, Betty Wright, she is, she's been in the industry for a very long time. She has worked with loads of great musicians and she writes and writes and writes every single day. When you speak to her, it sounds like she's writing a song. Oh, wow. Sometimes it's very, very confusing. Yeah, like... Oh, yeah, she's like you? a poet, <laughs> you know. So she's really, she's got a lot of um, history and education, in, certainly in soul music. And the way she would teach me was how, you know, a mentor should teach a little girl. It was, you know, she would stand in front of me when I was singing. And I'd be in the vocal booth with the pop shield here and, you know, la, la, la. And she would find her way into this tiny little vocal booth and stand right in front of me. And she'd go like this. And you're like, she'd do oh. this. It was very weird. It, <laughs> it made me laugh quite a lot. But this is what she was doing. She was listening to the words and she was saying, feel it. Yeah. Come, like feel it, do something, you know. And at first, for a, a long time actually, I was like, okay, <laughs> oh, scary. No. I don't yeah, know what you're doing. <laughs> but then she would she would sit me down and say, No, I want you to read the lyrics and I want you to go and tell me the story. Because if you're not telling me the story, I don't feel anything from you. That's true. And that's the most important thing about music. That's the reason why we bother making it in the first place, is to help people feel something. If they don't feel anything, in my opinion you failed. It's true. You should go home. It's true. You know, that's so amazing. I learned that from her. And that was the Soul Sessions 1. Yeah, and the 2... Soul Sessions 2, it was kind of like... I just was trying out what I'd learned. So I was kind of testing out certain things. Yeah. Um, Soul Sessions 2 was an interesting, an interesting recording session. I like it. It was all right. <laughs> no, I really liked it. It was all right. Now, uh, talking precisely about uh, your time with Super Heavy, mm. crazy idea. 
Yeah, how do you, that was who, Dave. Who am I? Oh, Dave. Yeah, that was Dave. He always has crazy ideas. And when somebody told, okay, you're gonna be with Damian Marley and with Mick Jagger, and you yeah. were like, what? How do you? Yeah, you know, Dave's funny how he does things. He'll, he he likes the shock factor. <laughs> he loves all that. Um, so he'll call me up and be like, all right, Joss, how you doing? You know, I miss you, and you know, I think we should hang out again. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, we should. He goes, hey. I'm going to make a band. Do you want to be in my band? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll be in your band. I've never been in a band. <laughs> of course I'll be in your band. And he's like, cool, cool, cool. He goes, um, yeah, so we're going to try and get some other really cool people in it. I was like, okay, good. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, so Mick Jagger's going to be in it. <laughs> what? And I was like, oh. Mick Jagger's going to be in my band. <laughs> I see. So this type of band, you know, that was a funny conversation. Amazing. And at that point, Damien wasn't confirmed, but... Um, then, you know, he had lots of different ideas of who would be great. And I was just like, well, I'm down. I'm down whatever. I'm down for whatever. As long as it's fun and as long as it's soulful and musically sound. And you know when Dave calls you, it will be musically sound. Um, then I'm in. So. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Jess. It's an, oh, um, a, a great to talk to you. You're beautiful. Oh. You have really good vibe. And you're really talented. So thank you so much for your time in this interview. Thank you. Gracias.